there's very few people that can out Elon in this world and that and I'm, I'm one of them. Do I come across arrogant delusional? Hey everyone, so I realize I'm kind of late to this party, but back on May 30th, Trevor Milton, the old CEO and now a executive chairman for Nikola Motors did an interview with JMac, and he's a YouTuber. Um, anyway, they got a bunch of questions and I realize this is kind of behind the times. It was about three months ago, but I think there's actually some relevant information that you can glean from this interview that's still pertinent to today. So let's get into it. Oh, but before we start, this interview is from JMac Investing and I'll leave a link to his channel down below. So go ahead and go watch the full interview on his channel. Okay, let's start. Nikola is very unique. There's very few companies like it in the entire planet. We're not, we're not really a trucking manufacturer. We are, we build really cool stuff. But we're actually an energy company is what we truly are. So when we sell a truck, a semi truck, all of our trucks are completely zero emission. Okay, so that brings up the first issue. And this is actually an issue I have with companies like Tesla also. But when you make the claim that your vehicle is zero emission, while that's technically true if you're just looking at the vehicle itself once it's already powered up. For Tesla, the creation of electricity and for Nikola, the creation of electricity and hydrogen, that takes some sort of power and Nikola has said that they're going to be using renewable energies but they're also going to be supplementing it with the grid and Tesla obviously uses mostly the grid and so what that's doing is the grid is you is powered primarily by fossil fuels although there are renewable energy sources in it too so you are using fossil fuels to power your car it's just not directly in your car it's using an off-site fossil fuel so what did Nikola do we took the oil companies out of the whole picture the oil companies, you know, they make three quarters of a million dollars on every truck sold. So they're sitting back there just clapping whenever Peterbilt or Volvo sells a truck because they're like, thank you for the another three quarter million dollars, you putts. And so what we will do, we decided, you know, let's take the oil companies out of the picture. Now, I actually think this is probably the best part about Nikola Motors' plan is that they're going to be able to sell their fuel to their semis. And it's kind of like something like a PlayStation or an Xbox where they can sell the console at cost or at a loss, but because they know they're going to be making more money from subscriptions, from the monthly game passes, and from people buying games. So this is a great idea, but claiming you're doing this by taking the money from the oil companies, well, any electric vehicle is also taking the money from the oil companies. Nikola is just doing the one step above, which is then bringing that money in themselves. So that's a great idea. So when we sell a truck, we get to take that three quarter million dollar revenue in. We go in and we tell a customer, when you buy our truck, all your fuel is included. You just pay us cost per mile, and we make that three quarters of a million dollars in revenue for Nikola. So let's break that down a little bit, because I was looking, and I see that fuel costs is actually one of their huge costs when you look at their projected cash generated per truck. And so let's do some quick math right here, because I want to see exactly how much fuel price fluctuation will change their numbers. Um, because one thing that they're doing is they're setting everything constant for the customer, so the customer doesn't care if fuel price changes, because it's all dependent on Nikola. So Nikola has set a price per kilogram of $2.47 for the hydrogen. So let's calculate what the fuel price would have to be in order to get their cash generated per truck lease to zero. And if you do that math real quick, um, you set price is the variable and then you solve it, the price actually only has to be $4.32 per kilogram. Now, Nikola's numbers are based on the it being a price of $2.47, so if it not quite doubles, then they are earning no cash generated. They have no cash generated per lease. And right now, the current cheapest hydrogen that you can get, which is in California, is $13.11. Now, that would obviously bankrupt, bankrupt Nikola, so this is showing the cost of hydrogen is integral to their business plan and they lose all their revenue if they can't get their price down to what they're claiming it's going to be. There's a lot of good about what, you know, what Tesla's done in the past to teach people that, uh, that electric vehicles can work. But Nikola is the pioneer in heavy duty trucking and Tesla is just really just following in our footsteps. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of them are uh, really believe that Elon is like this, this great person that can do anything. And it's, when they see someone else being able to actually beat him at what he's doing, they, they hate that. It's so Okay, this is one thing I really don't like that Trevor Milton does, which he's always comparing himself to Elon Musk. And I understand their companies are similar enough and that they're both trying to uh, transform the transportation industry, but he doesn't have to always go after Elon in this regard. And it actually reminds me of this comment that he got on this troll live stream uh, just a little bit ago, and I'll play this clip here. Trevor's way of speak. oh, so this came from David. Trevor's way of speaking is really annoying. I bet he was nice to you in private, but in public he comes across, across as an arrogant and delusional. Do I come across arrogant and delusional? 
Maybe I do. I don't know. I mean, I just try to be real. I think the reason he gets comments like that is he says stuff like, when they see someone who's beating Elon at what he's doing, then they hate that. He doesn't have to bring that up. I mean, does it matter? No, not at all. It's just one of those, he's talking trash, and that's totally fine. But it's just like he's bringing more things upon himself than he needs to. Look, we're not getting into the cars. We do we do trucks. We do you know huge semi-trucks all the way down to medium-duty trucks for business, like the Badger, uh, you know, the stuff. We only focus on markets that actually create revenue in, in any economy. Okay, so right there, we only focus on markets that create revenue in the economy. Now, by that, he means the semi-trucks or pickup trucks where a business would buy one and then they can presumably create revenue with that product. But that doesn't exactly explain why they're building the Wave jet ski or the NZXT off-roading 4x4. I mean, you're going to have a hard time making an argument that those are going to generate revenue for the consumers. And so I, it is a huge picture. There's no doubt. There's very few people that can out Elon in this world and that, and I'm, I'm one of them. There's very few people that can out Elon in this world and that, and I'm, I'm one of them. Do I come across arrogant and delusional? I, I have no problem with him. I think he's a, I think, you know, what he's done is awesome, but there's uh, it's, it's kind of hard when, uh, you know, for his followers to see someone that can actually build something bigger or, or, uh, um, or more competitive than what he has. So that's, that's why we get a lot of that hate sometimes. Do I come across arrogant and delusional? Yeah. I'm going to let that one speak for itself. We're the first OEM in the world. There's another reason why we're the first OEM in the world, full production, zero emission semi truck over 300 miles hands down anywhere in the world. Okay, I could be totally missing the point on this one, but when he says full production, we're the first OEM in the world, there's another reason why, we're the first OEM in the world, full production. To me, that means they're under full production, as in they're producing these trucks. But as we both know, they're not producing those trucks, they are not under full production, and they're not planning on uh, them being under full production for another year. So. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Am I misunderstanding this? Let me know in the comments below. If you look at our our zero emission semi truck coming out of right now, it's coming out of Ulm, Germany. That's in a partnership with Iveco out of Europe, and our factory is almost done right now, and it'll be full production next year. Yeah, I don't get it. How can they have a full production truck, but it's not full production till next year? Does that mean like the truck designs are finalized and it can be produced and it's totally ready? You just need to start doing it, or? Seriously, I don't understand this one. Let me let me know what I'm missing here. Yeah, um, you even have a jet ski, right? I even saw that. <laughs> we do, and a full electric jet ski to go with the off-road vehicle and the Badger. So when you pull your, you can pull your jet skis down to the lake with your Nikola Badger, ride your jet skis for you know a couple hours, come back to the Badger, charge them from your Badger. We're the only ones in the world can do vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle charging right now. That's been integrated into our software, so it's it, you can actually export energy from. Well, I shouldn't say we're probably not the only one. I, someone may have created something, but we're we're the first ones for sure. Okay, so here's the thing where he's just wrong. Uh, this this interview happened on May 30th of 2020, and back in 2019, on November 21st, the Cybertruck was announced, and one of the things they did was on stage they had an electric ATV drive up into the bed of the Cybertruck, and then they plugged in the ATV to charge it. So right there, they were doing vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle charging, and that's you know six months before this interview is taking place. So, and I just have a really hard time believing that Trevor doesn't know about this feature of the Cybertruck that was announced six months before, especially when the CEO, Mark Russell, said this. He said, we didn't plan on building the Badger until we saw the, the Cybertruck announcement. Check this clip out. We, we hadn't planned on building a passenger pickup truck until the, the Cybertruck was, was unveiled by Tesla. And so many people were, uh, Disappointed with that. It was a, it's a polarizing design. They said, "Hey, don't you? Couldn't you guys do something like that?" And when it so happened that we had a concept, and we just threw it out there. Trevor just tweeted it out there and said, "Here's a here's a concept that we've we've actually done before," and that's what attracted the attention of some OEMs, and that's what got us thinking that we might want to build it. You see why I might not believe that he didn't know the Cybertruck had this feature. Designing a vehicle for the European market, making a truck more attractive than any other truck on the market that is almost nearly impossible to do and we did it that's the, the tray uh, right yeah the nikola tray a yeah. pickup truck like the badger becoming more gorgeous than any truck on the market damn near impossible to do companies have been trying to do that for 50 years and we did it with our first truck do i come across arrogant delusional 
it's because we're the only group that's really thought out the entire process, vertically integrated from beginning to end where there's no, there's very little risk in the, in, in our model. Now it, all the risk we have is in execution. That's really it. All the risk we have is in execution. That's really it. Oh, if the only risk is in execution, then. <laughs> Soon, I'll be announcing when we're going to show off the Badger to the whole world. And this thing is insanity. It is the most beautiful truck I think the world has ever seen. It's a fully functioning vehicle, inside, outside, HVAC, everything, you know, windows, everything, all of it works. I shouldn't say all of it. I'll probably have a couple pieces on a break on me, but hey. <laughs> that's a great caveat there. <laughs> it's, uh, that's part of the process of building the truck, but it's a real, real truck. It's not just some mock-up thing that other people have done. This is a real, real truck. The amount of times he had to say, this is a real, real truck. This is not some vaporware, you know, just mock-up. It makes me think, I mean, come on. We're all thinking it. All right, that's where I'm gonna end this one. I know I'm kind of late to the party, but I feel like I still had stuff to add. I mean, some of this stuff is actually kind of comedic and I was I was enjoying watching the interview. But hey, go watch the interview uh, on that guy's channel, JMac Investing. Uh, go check that out and give him some thumbs up because he's, he's a cool dude and I'm really glad he got the interview. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.